It's that time of week again. It's Tuesday night and we're going out scalloping. I've got a few things to do. I've got one little mission I've got to try and get uh, or try and unhook uh, Jason from Inshore Fishing's pot. And I think it's down near Gabriel somewhere, so we'll give that a tug, see if it comes out. But, you know, one of them times. You just don't know what you're going to do, don't know what you're going to see. It's going to be interesting. Anyway, stick with us and let's get diving. I think they're old scallop shells. Are they frills in there? Frills for the fishermen. Keeney's been busy today. He's already uh, shocked a load when he's been in it. Been in the arbor. So he's landed them, shocked them. Take the shells back. Some of the shells end up going in the uh, in the chart of fishing. It must be going out breathing. Flashed out and bought a new shop belt. The other one lived in the stopper at the back there for like 11 years in the diesel. I like to say it never let me down, but that's kind of the point of a shop belt, is it is to let you down. Yeah, yeah, I might have lost a bit of shot out the last one because the, uh, the seams went on here and then all the little round balls and leads went out into the environment, which isn't good, so, and you can't be doing that for too long. Anyway, let's get out of there. coming to the end of the spider crab season now so the majority of the spider crabs I'm seeing now are females and they are looking pretty tired that's a huge lump of rust coral probably one of the biggest I've seen and it's just out on the sand as well don't know how that hasn't been damaged and ripped up so we got our first scallop. Looking nice and clean around here, but very small. Looks like a very old bottle. Looks like it's been here a while. It looks like a Corona bottle. It's just an old lemonade bottle. big yellow one there's a big boring sponge and there's some more boring sponges he's a work camouflage scallop but he's too small Swimming in a northerly direction, um, I drop down tide of where the pots are stuck, so I get a little bit of dive before I get to them. I just hope I end up seeing them on the way past, and not miss them. Not quite sure what that pink thing is. He 
This is some lovely yellow staghorn coral, soft coral. This stuff's everywhere. I got excited when I seen this, so I thought it was a stone cannibal, which would have been the first one I've ever found. I've seen two friends that have got stone cannibals. I'd love to have one. see the crab bots. I'm not quite sure if these are the right crab bots. They didn't really fit the description that Jason gave me. He told me there's two parlor pots and a big square homemade one. But these are certainly tangled on the reef so I'll do someone a favor and untangle them anyway. You can see inside this one there's a ballon wrasse swimming around. There's not much I could do to get him out at the moment but anyway. It's not my style taking stuff out of pots, so whoever catches it, pulls it up, hopefully he can release it if they want to. I don't know how, but pot rope always tends to go through little tiny gaps, so as you pull the pot harder it sort of tightens in. So when they fishermen pay out their pots, they normally drop one in and then motor off so to keep the line between the pots nice and tight. This looks like it's just been chucked over the side of the boat and you can see there where they've had to join it and someone's had, a, someone's had to cut their rope. Sometimes this happens if you pay over someone and they pull their pots up and your rope comes up. Some fishermen just cut your rope and retie it. Here we have another female cuckoo wrasse going through the transition. You can just see the colours on its nose changing. This is another common thing we see. Uh, so people pull their pots and say, oh, there's absolutely nothing in my pot. I wonder, I think someone's probably pulled my pot. But more than likely, this is what's happened. It's fallen to the seabed and it's landed upside down. So nothing can get in if it's upside down. Oh, saying that, there's a lobster in this one. So, that pot on the end didn't look like a homemade one. That's a long, thin one that looks like a D, so that's a parlour pot, which is used for catching lobsters. So I'm just going to swim back along the rope again now, just make sure it's all completely untangled. Look at this, there's a lobster. He's just sticking his head out. Um, it might uh, it might even go in the pot. But the pot's all jammed up on the reef, so I'll untangle all the rope. lift it and put it back on the sand. Now down to one last job and now I've got to swim up the cable now. The bit from the buff on the surface that goes down to the first pot is normally referred to as the cable. So I'm going to swim up this 170 bar left. I've got loads. I've got to do another dive in this tank easy. So now just go back up this line and make sure it's not tangled on anything. Mm -hmm. 
Not quite sure what that weird slime was. Oh, look, there's another one of them pink things. So my actual's come up now with, I'm guessing, well, that was two separate bags because you couldn't put anything in these other bags. I've got 165. There's 50. Yeah, there's a crate already. I don't know if there's many on this size there, but they're going to go back. There might be one or two. Good numbers. Yeah, that's that's Keeney sort of numbers there. Yeah. Keeney has not So I think that was a bit of a successful mission there. I think inshore fishing's pops were uh, the ones I come across. Anyway, I hope they were because they were tangled. You see the little lobster just about to go out and go into the pot. As I moved the pot to get it out of the way, so when he pulled it, it wouldn't jam up again. It went back in its hole. Oh well. Uh, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> He's got the biggest count, 151. Is that the second highest number record that we've had on the boat? I think that's coming up for my highest score. Yeah. Well, we all know someone that got 152. Well, Molly did. Molly got Molly, quite a lot. Molly, Molly, Molly got, got that one time. Molly had a swollen sack once, yeah. <laughs> Big old bag full of them. He spilled it all over the deck. Yeah. Be good. This is what I mean by there's only females left. So this is a, a little pocket in the sand which they form because they don't move very far. So as the tide rushes past them, it scours the sand out. They're looking pretty sorry for themselves at the moment. Just slowly feeding. There's a nice selection of cockles or clams in this area. Another group of females. These look even more sorry as I kick sand in their face. Poor things. There's a female trying to run away from me with two legs on one side and one claw. Just small after small. Ah, uh, this one's better. Four or five years old, that one. This is quite a large dragonette fish. I love the shape of their eyes when you get in quite close there. Their eyes look like a, almost like a golden outlined heart. I 
was uh, kind of hoping not, I wouldn't hit this side of the reef. So this is on the inside of Anfray Reef. It's not very deep, it's about 12, 15 meters. And you can see all the kelp. I love how it flaps in the sea. It's almost like a sort of female's hair in the wind. Some people it's probably their worst nightmare having to swim through seaweed, but I absolutely love it. Just as I come out from behind the reef, I look down and see a red mullet. Just get my camera out ready and it's gone. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Just as I'm looking for scallops at the bottom of the reef, I catch something out the corner of my eye. It's a shanker, getting all defensive. Seeing a shanker or brown edible crab out on the sand is normally a good sign. It means it's out hunting and it's not it's not scared of getting uh, eaten because its shell is nice and hardened. So the term you hear when a, a crab has just molted um, is it's called a lantern. It's, it's full of water inside. There's no meat in there. It's still pumping it up, pumping the meat up. So I see that as a good sign. So I'm going to take it to the surface and then have it for tea. I'm in the one more scallop and I'm going up mode at the moment. Just going into the red, so that means I'm going up. Back. Come on, let go. Yeah. 
penises these crabs and the spider crabs lucky old crabs I learn something new every day <laughs> got his little uh, flat back God, oh, that is unbelievably sharp them little things strong oh well he's gonna come home or have him on a sandwich a small sandwich yeah a spiny sandwich <laughs> Have a, a bit of bread folded in half. Yeah, chuck them in there. Just look at all these. Too small. Too small. Too close to being small. Of nine. Anyway, I pay for a bit of your bikini. Of it. Yeah, it's not the edge of the Perfect. There oh, she is, there's Margaret. That's the younger sister. Bum. She will have control. That's the skipper drop the ship. Push bow out, JP. Are you are you moving her? Yeah, She's okay. She's had her bump sprayed. She should go a lot faster now. Older than 13 parsecs. <laughs>
get the gate out. Daft time. Uh, and there she is. Gaff cab. That was a very enjoyable one tonight. I enjoy myself. I didn't get much footage, but hopefully there's enough to satisfy everyone's need for the underwater. Uh, we got Jason's pots back from uh, inshore Guernsey. So that's the result. Well, I hope those are his pots. They were the pink boffs, uh, pink and white boffs. So went down. Whoever's it was, was tangled. So anyway, it's untangled now. I enjoyed that. Just me and Matt and Keeney. Lovely relaxing night. Um, hope I had that little red mullet on, on film. As soon as I got my camera in, it seemed to zoom off, but anyway, I enjoyed that. Hope you enjoyed that, and I'll catch you on the next tide.